Hey guys, it is me again. Today is what, Sunday, uh, November the what, 27th? Makes it day 331. Time to project serve him more, so. Yeah, that's right. As usual, guys, it is good to be here, like I said. It's very good to be here. Uh, trying to get some stuff out of the way here. Uh, yeah, it's good to be here. Hope you guys are doing all right. Hope you're having a good Sunday. Uh, and I'm going to try to make this video a lot shorter than last night. Uh, last night, that that's one of the longest vids I've ever made. Um, there's no way I can make a video like that tonight. My, to my tooth will kill me too bad tonight. Uh, you know, uh, this thing, and like I said, it's infected. I mean, if I went to the dentist tomorrow, all he'd do is give me antibiotics and say come back when it clears up because, you know, they won't pull a tooth and it, that's all that can be done to it. They won't pull one with it infected. So, um, I'm taking antibiotics and ibuprofen and it's, it actually is not bothering me too bad today until this evening. Uh, I had a, a friend stop by that uh, is wanting to get into reloading. Uh, you know, he shoots a lot of guns and stuff and. Uh, wanting to get into reloading, so he wanted to stop by for me to show him kind of how to do it. He bought three, uh, three uh, 45 ACP shells by, and uh, I basically took him through the process. You know, I didn't clean them or anything, but you know, I deprimed them and um, and sized them and then flared them back out and put primers in them and 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 did the whole nine yards. You know, put powder in them and put bullets in them and seated the bullets to the right length and crimped them and you know made three shootable rounds uh, and anyway we talked so much you know I was trying to tell him everything tell him what to do what not to do and he was here probably two hours two right at it two hours and by the time he left my tooth was just it was just killing me over here my jaw swelled up I don't know you probably can't tell it on video but um, well, I talked so much, I guess, and hit it with my tongue and, and different stuff. It, it got it uh, got it flared up, got it inflamed. So, um, yeah, I'm not going to talk like that tonight like I did last night. But, like I said, it's good to have you all here. I hope everybody's doing all right. I really do. Um, let's see. Um, i trying to think if there was anything I needed to say specifically. Um, I guess not. Not really. Um, I want to thank you guys for praying for us. Um, praise the Lord today. Uh, you know, I, I was telling you guys, I think last night about mom being sick, not feeling good. Uh, well, anyway, today she was she wasn't no better. This morning she wasn't no better, and uh, stomach bothering her. Real bad, burning up into her chest, lightheaded, head hurting a little, swearing up and down it was indigestion. And uh, we went to church, and my sister and my nephew came to church. Well, me and dad told my sister at church basically what you know was going on with mom. And she said, Well, when we get out of church, I'm going to go check on her. She said, You know, that's a lot of, she said, Actually, just about every one of those symptoms that you've told me put together is a heart attack, you know. Uh, you know, that's, you know, that's a lot of the signs of, of some heart attacks. Not all, but some heart attacks people do that. They get real sick at their stomach. Their stomach bothers them. Hurts up into their chest. Head hurting, light, you know, just, I mean, carbon copy. I mean, symptoms of, of could be a heart attack. So she said, I'm going to go check. So she come out here and talk with mom. And, uh, and mom felt so bad because she told her, she said, you know, you're, you know, indigestion, You've had this for like 13 hours now. Indigestion goes away quicker than that. You know, you're um, you're going to the hospital. Get your clothes on. Get ready to go. So, uh, mom went. So, uh, and you could tell that she felt bad because she went. I mean, you know, it, uh, even though she was still hollering, you know, it was something else. So, anyway, they took her to the hospital and uh, did EKGs and did everything, did X chest x-rays and everything about her heart and everything came back good you know said she hadn't had a heart attack or nothing like that um, I don't think they ever figured out exactly maybe what was wrong with her I mean 
we thought maybe maybe food poisoning too, but like they said, nine times out of ten when you get food poisoning, you throw up. And she was dry heaving. She was trying to throw up, but she couldn't. She didn't have anything to throw up, and that was kind of odd. So to be honest, I don't know if they ever did figure out what it was, but it wasn't heart problems, so I praise the Lord for that. You know, so she, you know, they did all these tests on her, and, and she come home, and, uh, you know, I, she's she's feeling better now. Uh, you know, she uh, she's drunk her some of those little small Cokes, Cokes in a bottle, uh, you know, and keeps belching and burping, and uh, like I said, I don't know. I don't know. Might have been food poisoning. We eat from Wendy's yesterday, and she says that she can just think about that. Uh, she got a chicken wrap, a spicy chicken wrap. She just she can just think about that thing and get sick. So maybe it was food poisoning, you know. But like we told her, better safe than sorry. You know, she kept hollering about the money, what it's gonna cost. We said, well, you know, if you send them twenty dollars a month or ten dollars a month, you know, they have to take it. Uh, you know, it's better safe than sorry. I mean, that's what we told her. And and and, I, and one reason she went to, you know, my uncle died. Uh, Man, I, I'm ashamed to say this, but it, I don't know how long it's been. It's either two years this January first or three years. I honestly don't remember. I don't. I, I don't do good, do good with time. I don't keep. You know what I'm saying. I don't keep up with time good. Uh, but uh, you know, he went to. He had some chest pains and some different things, and went to the to the hospital that evening. And he wouldn't go to the hospital actually, so he went to like an after hours clinic. And they checked him and said nothing was wrong, basically, or he might have had a, I don't know, a chest cold. I don't know what they told him. They sent him home. Uh, it was like 7 or 8 o'clock that evening. And by 12.30 that night, you know, he he was gone. Uh, still don't know. I don't really know what happened to him. Uh, so, I, I, something in his heart, I guess. Or, so, anyway, that, that ever since then, that's really scared mom, and she don't take near as many chances. So, she went. And, like I said, praise the Lord, everything turned out all right. Like I said, she still feels bad, but, uh, you know, I guess it is something else. You know, we just want to make sure it wasn't her heart. Let's see. Uh, one thing they did tell her, though, her blood pressure and everything was way too low. Uh, well, not way too low, but it was too low. Uh, the medicine they got her on to slow her heart down is, I think they've got her on too much. So, that's what my sister was telling her. She may have to cut back on that medicine. They've got her on so much and it's slowing her heart down too much, but. Anyway, guys, I want to thank you for your prayers last night. And, you know, like Dad said, you know, we can, we can do uh, mighty things when, you know, we believe what that the Lord can do it. So I just want to ask you guys to keep praying. Pray for my whole family. Pray for Dad. Uh, he's just, man, he's just, he's the rock of this family. And, and you know, he's getting older. And, and uh, I just, you know, I ask for you guys to pray for him, you know, because he's starting to have a few little health problems here and there. So uh, pray for him as well. I know that you do. Let's see, guys. I guess that's about it tonight. Like I said, I don't really have that much jibber-jabber. Had a good time at church today. Didn't have many people there, as usual. Had uh, had four or five people today that hadn't been there in a while that showed up. But then for that four or five that showed up, I had four or five that have been coming that didn't show up. So, you know, you just, I don't know. It's, it's, I want to throw my hands up and just say, what? You know, what do I do? You know, if I could get everybody here at one time, I could fill the church house, but I just, they won't, they all won't show up at one time. Uh, I, I've accused them, I actually have, I've accused them, you know, just joking of, of, of uh, getting together with each other and calling, okay, and saying, okay, now, we're, this bunch is going to come these two weeks, and this bunch is going to come these two weeks, you know, out of the month, because uh, it almost seems like that. Like I said, the, we had the four or five people today that hadn't been in a while. And then we had yeah, about four or five that had been had that had been coming every week. And then when these show up, now they're gone. So uh but anyway, I guess we'll get started tonight, guys. Get to the important thing. That is of course the word of God. Acts chapter nineteen, starting in verse four. Here we go. Then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him, that is, on Christ Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them, and they spake with tongues and prophesied. And all the men were about twelve. And he went into the synagogue and spake boldly for the space of three months, 
disputing and persuading the things concerning the kingdom of God. But when the divers, excuse me, but when divers were hardened and believed not, but spake of evil, of that way before the multitude, he departed from them and separated the disciples, disputing daily in the school of one Tyrannus. So we can see here, man, that Paul was just, just diligent, you know, diligent, diligent, diligent's what I said. I meant to say diligent, guys, excuse me. I don't know what I got mixed up with there, but we can see that he was just so diligent in doing this, you know, going for these places for months and even years at a time, it says. Verse 10, and this continued by the space of two years, so that all that which dwelt in Asia heard the word of the Lord Jesus, both Jews and Greeks. And God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul so that from his body were brought unto the sick handkerchiefs or aprons, and the diseases departed from them, and the evil spirits went out of them. Then certain of the vagabond Jews, exorcists, took upon them to call over them which had evil spirits in the name of the Lord Jesus, saying, We adjure you by Jesus whom Paul preacheth. And there were seven sons of one Sceva, a Jew, and chief of the priests, which did so. I like this right here, guys. That's 10 verses. That's where I was going to stop, but I'm going to read this because I like this. Verse 15, And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are ye? And the man in whom the evil spirit was left on them and overcame them and prevailed against them, so that they fled out of the house naked and wounded. Basically, this spirit, this this demon, when when these guys see they they seen what Paul and 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 the the real preachers of the gospel was doing the power that they had and they wanted it you know they were envious of it so they said well all we got to do is go out and say the same things they do and we'll have the same power well you know it didn't work like that they didn't really have the Holy Spirit so they go out to cast this demon out of this guy you know uh, basically saying the same stuff and they mention the name of Jesus and that demon you know just basically looks at him raising its voice and says. Jesus, I know, you know, he's, and Paul, I know, but who are ye? He's saying, Jesus, I know Jesus has got the power to throw me out of this man, and Paul has got the power to throw me out of this man through Jesus, but who are you? Who do you think you are, basically, is what this demon's doing, you know, and it says, and, and the man in whom the evil spirit was left on them and overcame them and prevailed against them so that they fled out of the house naked and wounded, this demon basically whooped the tar out of these guys so bad that they left the house it says fled out of the house naked and wounded it, it, he ripped their clothes off and they, they they fled out of this house naked and wounded now just going to show you know that these things these you know these uh uh demons you know and that kind of stuff man ain't ain't nothing to, to take light of you know they uh you know we we through jesus christ we still have more power we have the power to prevail against them but they're nothing to sneeze at you know and uh, these guys did not have the power of Jesus Christ with them, in them, because they were not saved. They were not, they were not sanctified. They did not have the Holy Spirit. They were just putting on a show, kind of like the sad thing is, guys. A lot of Christians do today. I preached a little bit about that today, talking about people uh, in this country. We lose focus so much on on you know on the Lord. You know, we've got so much things that take us that take that get our focus off God. You know, whether it be money, which is most people's big thing, money, and even family, and, and you know, uh, uh, hobbies, sports, all these different things can take our, you know, it takes our focus away from God. You know, if we let it, you know, all these things can be good things, but if we'll let them, that they can take our focus away from the Lord. And when our focus gets off of him, you know, we start, we start getting away from him. And uh, that's basically, uh, you know, like I said about these guys running around pretending to have something, that's what you get. And that's the reason you've got a lot of the church today is people that claim to have something. They claim to have the Lord and they don't. They don't have, you know, they don't have any power to do anything. Uh, so anyway, guys, I need to make this bit a little bit shorter. It's going to be a little bit shorter than last night's anyway. Thanks for being here, guys. I love you all. Uh, if you need anything, as always, let me know. Um, good Lord willing, I'll be back here tomorrow night. It's supposed to cool down here tomorrow, so I dread it. Um, I'll be back here tomorrow night, guys. So, till I see y'all again, good night and God bless.